Thank you very much, Director. I'll start the questioning. Um, thank you for the visit yesterday to your headquarters and the demonstration of, uh, uh, I think, true advancements in terms of 702 to try to avert any concern about constitutional issues. I still have some of those concerns, as you might expect, uh, and we have uh, proffered an alternative to the current system that we think is reasonable. It has an emergency exception in it to it, as it should, because there are issues of grave national security that can't wait even for the process to continue. Uh, and secondly, when it came to victimization, uh, we allow consent by the victim to con go forward with the collection of information uh, in those situations as it should be. Since the enactment of FISA Amendment Reauthorization Act of 2018, the FBI has been required to obtain a court order for U.S. person searches in a narrow subset of cases involving predicated criminal investigations unrelated to national security. Has the FBI ever obtained a court order in order to perform a U.S. person search of 702 data in this context? Uh, to the best of my knowledge, we have not, and that's partly because that's not the way we use 702. That's correct. The answer is zero. The Office of the Director of National Intelligence Annual Statistical Transparency Report for 2020 revealed that this statutory requirement has been triggered approximately 100 times. Is that true? That I can't speak to the number. Um, I, know, I think the report in question may involve um, incidents that it all occur before the reforms uh, that we just were talking about. But I, I'd appreciate it if you take a look at that and answer for the record. Let me take to another topic that I, has been uh, issued, discussed before this committee and voted on several different occasions, and that's CSAM, Child Sexual Abuse Materials. Recently, the National Association of Attorneys General sent a letter to Congress asking lawmakers to study the means and methods of artificial intelligence, or AI, being used to exploit children through a generation of child sexual abuse material, or CSAM. In the letter, the Attorneys General described how AI can be used to create new images of children in sexual positions or otherwise overlay photos of unvictimized children on photos of abused children to create CSAM. Uh, to put this in simple terms, I don't know of any parent or grandparent who is knowledgeable in this area who hasn't warned their children, grandchildren, please be careful what you communicate on the Internet and who you communicate it with. You've highlighted the FBI's work to, quote, identify, prioritize, investigate, and deter individuals and criminal networks from exploiting children. And you've noted that the proliferation of CSAM on the dark net is threatening. Director Ray, can you elaborate on what the FBI is doing to disrupt te technologies used to exploit children? What obstacles are you facing related to this work? So I think there is no mission set, no threat that the uh, FBI's men and women tackle that is more uh, righteous and more at the heart of why we do what we do than protecting kids. Um, and I know that last year we uh, arrested something like 3,000 child predators and rescued uh, something like 2,000 kids from exploitation, the vast majority of which is happening uh, heavily online, but then often leads to uh, what's even worse, which is the actual hands-on abuse. And certainly, as you noted, Mr. Chairman, uh, technologies have continued to advance in a way that makes uh, that threat even more pernicious, including AI, including the ability to uh, create synthetic content, for example. Uh, when you ask about challenges that we face, one of the biggest concerns that we have is that the companies, these technology companies, are increasingly moving in a direction where they are designing warrant-proof decryption. And what that means to everybody listening at home is that we're going to be in a situation where the abuse that's happening on those platforms, law enforcement won't have any ability, no matter how rock solid the, the warrant, to get access to the information we need to protect those kids and take down those monsters. And the companies themselves are effectively blinding themselves to abuse that's happening on their own platforms. Uh, so what we really need is for the companies 
to work with Congress, work with the executive branch, work with law enforcement to design their encryption in a way that makes sure that they maintain the ability to respond to uh, you know, rock solid legal process, respond to warrants. So why aren't they cooperating with us? Why are these companies resisting an effort to engage them in solving the problem? Well, I, I, you know, I can't speak for them in terms of their motivations. Obviously, uh, these issues get into balances of privacy and security, and that's a long-standing debate. To children, when it comes to children, for goodness sakes, what is the privacy concern there? You got me. <laughs> uh, I, I will tell you that uh, we get from some of these companies millions of tips we've had historically uh, about child exploitation. And the idea that we would go into a model where those tips just evaporate, let's be clear, when the tips evaporate, the kids are still out there getting abused. The predators are still out there. The only thing's changed is our ability to do anything about it because of the way in which the companies would be designing their encryption. So it's a way for them to essentially uh, and again, I can't speak to their motivation, but it's a way for them to essentially blind themselves to what's happening on their platforms and then indirectly then blind us to our ability to protect kids and go after predators. We're going to be bringing some leaders in the industry before this committee uh, next uh, month. I hope uh, we can ask these questions directly. But I will tell you, we passed overwhelmingly, uh, unanimously, five different uh, bills related to this issue, uh, and I thought that was going to be an avenue to bring them to the floor. The resistance from big tech uh, to even pursue this issue, despite this overwhelming bipartisan vote, troubles me greatly. I want to believe they want to do the right thing. There's very little evidence of that. Senator Graham. 